Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. This is the third oral history for the project. Uh, my name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is February 9th, uh, 2022, um, and we're very excited to uh, have here as our guest, Slave, um, and I'll say a little bit more about him in a second, but before I do so, Kurt, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Kurt Brown. Uh, <coughs> I've been writing about uh, urban culture over 40 years. Great. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, we're here with Slave, uh, who really, really unique and prolific uh, uh, graffiti writer from the kind of uh, 74, 75 to 79 era of graffiti, member of the Fabulous Five, um, did many, many top to bottom pieces. And I believe if I'm correct, Slave, you were part of, uh, uh, part of the crew that did the first entire train, or at least entire train in operation, is that right? Right. Something like that, yeah, so that's a landmark, 1977, I think, right. somewhere around there. Um, and extremely unique style, um, and just excited that he's here. He was actually born in the Bronx, he'll talk about that in a second, even though he um, grew up mostly in Brooklyn, um, but did a lot of work in the Bronx as well. Um, so, so yeah. We usually start these oral histories by asking people to talk a little bit about their family history and background um, and your earliest years. Yeah, well, my name is Kenneth Durant, known as Slave from the Family Five. Uh, I originally was born in the Bronx, but then we moved to Brooklyn. I really don't remember too much of the Bronx. I was like about two or three years old when we moved to Brooklyn. Well, we moved out to East New York first. I used to live on 570 Skank Avenue. Ah. Yeah, but then a little kid, you know, we went around and played with we had a park across the street and all of that. But then when I got about like nine or ten, we moved to Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I used to live on Carroll Street and Troy Avenue. Sure. Yeah, so that's where, you know, I kind of started witnessing like a lot of graffiti and all of that. And then some friends around my way, one of their, one of their cousins or brothers used to write on graffiti on the subways. Ah. So I used to always hear them talking about they, they used to go there at lunchtime and break in from after school or, or, or they just leave school and used to go down into Kingston Avenue to paint on the trains because they got a layoff that be there like in the afternoon in, in between rush hours. Yeah. So I kept hearing them, hearing them, but back then I used to like draw cartoons and you know, like the comic books like every other little kid. You know? so, sure, sure. And I, they took me one time and kind of got hooked because I was kind of good for, just for the first time I did it. Yeah. But then they kind of like faded off. But me and one of my friends around the block, he used to be my partner named Fax160. Mm -hmm. Me and him, we started teaming up. And we started doing that. But we were buddies, you know, from on the streets, hanging out yeah. and doing all that stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 for you know, sure. That's how I got really started in graffiti. Then I met um, a writer named Dash. He kind of showed me all the ins and outs of, of graffiti. Oh, when I first started, I used to do these throw-ups called R.O., and I was writing with this crew called Top. I had to go with um, OI, IO, 2, and, and 8168 and all that. Going to the yards and just do, you know, quick pieces back and back then. I kind of like, you know, what used to be going all the way to the yard to do two letters quickly just to do a bunch of the same piece over and over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've seen one, you've seen them all. So, yeah, you got bored with that. Yeah, that so, but then I started seeing like all the blade pieces and the old school birds with Tracy and Palo and Riff and all of them. So I said, I, that's what I really wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't, like, think of a name. So I, I used to work in Macquarie's when I was about, like, 14, 15. So they used to work me, work me, and work me. Then when you get your chick, it's like, hardly oh, nothing. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's how I came with the name Slave. I said, look at that, you working me like a slave. Oh, okay. So that's how Slave came about. <laughs> Right, see? Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then yeah, I started practicing my S's because few people had a name start with S, but not many. So Yeah, I feel like yeah. S is a hard letter to, uh, yeah, to work with. Especially to start your name off with, with the S. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of yeah. got into it, and as I kept going and going, and you, know, you watch different pieces go back and forth, so kind of like get a curve from here, a point of arrow from here, and that's how I started developing my style. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, you want to go back into the early days? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you do you know much about your um, either your parents' background uh, as far as? <laughs> Were they born in New York? Did they did they move up to New York from someplace? Do you know yeah. much about that? Oh, my whole family they originated from the Virgin Islands. Okay, sure, St. Yeah. Croix, Fredericksburg, St. Croix, and then okay. they moved up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like all my brothers, sisters, everybody were born there. I was the only one born in New York. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, I see. Yeah, my mother, she was a nurse. My father, believe it or not, he used to drive the subway trains. <laughs> <laughs> So did, did he uh, did he see any, any of your pieces? Uh, he he see me do it on books and then like down in, in my basement, I did a, all the walls all the way around it in cartoon characters. Oh wow! And then he see it spray paint, but he had an idea, but he never really said it. All he said, whatever you do, if you get caught, don't call me. I'm not coming to pick you up. <laughs> he always told me that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I have like a shelf down in, in the basement, like in the corner, but full of with, with spray paint that I racked up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he had an idea, but... Yeah, that's funny. Yes. That's funny. Did, did you have other uh, other family, like aunts, uncles, grandparents that lived in New York? Or they all yeah. lived back in St. Cole? No, all my aunts and everything, they lived in the Bronx. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I, used to come, I used to come up here to visit them, but I was a, I was a small kid. But one of my aunts stayed on the 5 and 2 line by Freeman and Simpson. Sure. So... The level of her, of her apartment, right where the train go by. I don't even know how she gets to take that every day, the train running up and down and up and down. <laughs> but he used to always come around and I could look out the window and see the trains. But Perfect viewing. Yeah, stuff. but I wasn't graffiti minded then. Yeah. My yeah, father used yeah, to come yeah. by, to my father go by, he'd blow the horn. So I know it was him driving oh, the train. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So that was wow, a good time. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so which, uh, which elementary school did you go to? Um, I went to 182 when I lived in East New York. And then and when I moved to Crown Heights, I went to PS221. Then I went to um, junior high school at Winthrop. Then from high school, it was because I used to get good grades in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they used to tease me in school, call me Riff. Oh. When I cartoon, Riff from reading the fundamentals and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one, one, one time my mother went shopping and they bought me a book bag. But it was the the kind of like the anti-shake case, the hard plastic one. Oh, oh yeah, sure. man. Oh, I'm sure you got Those were the worst that. days in my school. Man. Oh. <laughs> one time me and a dude got into an argument, and then he we was in the schoolyard, and he kicked my briefcase. It went so far across the schoolyard, I felt so embarrassed. It was spinning and scrubbing. I was going across it. Everybody looking at me like, what you going to do? What you going to do? <laughs> I got beat up, though, that day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was way bigger than me, brother. Oh, yeah, but yeah, he never yeah. fought me again because he didn't know how to fight, but Yeah. Oh, I was so embarrassed because it went so far. I couldn't even run behind him because he kicked it so hard and it flew so fast across there was nothing I could do. They might try, ooh. <laughs> so I had no choice but to fight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What, what were your teachers like in elementary and junior high? Well, high school was different because um, me and my friends, we were talking, talking, talking. They just thought they were going to go to Brooklyn Tech and all that. Yeah. I didn't really want to go. I wanted to go to Wingate, but sure. they kept talking and talking to us. Yeah, you can't pass the test. That's what, So I went and took the test. And, and, I, and I got a 92 and yeah. I got into the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then... That's when I kind of got into the graffiti stuff when I was in Brooklyn Tech. So, sure. Once you get in, you can't get out. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, when I started doing graffiti, I started skipping school and stuff. You go racket in the morning to get, because once you go in, all the doors are bolted, you cannot come out. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I started skipping school and stuff. But I, I'd be there for most of the days for tests and stuff. I passed the tests, but sure. attendance wasn't good. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Brooklyn Tech was yeah. one of the best schools in the right. city. So. Yeah. So, uh, so, you, always, you didn't get involved in no sports or nothing like that? Well, I always played basketball. I always played basketball, but I never played for no school. No, but, yeah. I wanted to play for Thomas Jefferson because that's what my brother played for. Mm. But we had moved from East New York anyway, so. Yeah. I wasn't going to go back to school all the way to Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, no, no. Brooklyn Tech ain't had much of a team, really. So. That's right. You, know, you, you so I didn't think about basketball it. basketball in the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah played yeah. almost every day in the neighborhood. Yeah. We used to go up to um, St. John Park, up to about Albany Projects. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. But that was dangerous to go up there anyway just to play basketball. Albany Projects was kind of bad projects. But oh, okay, yeah. Kept going up there, we started meeting people, and we started playing ball and stuff. Yeah. Were there other things that you did uh, around the neighborhood for fun other than basketball? Well, we played basketball, baseball, football. Pretty much anything. Yeah. Butch, Butch was telling us in, in his neighborhood in Hunts Point, they would do full contact tackle football out on the street. 
Um, oh. <laughs> which is serious, serious. Yeah, but around the corner from us, we had this, this hospital. We used to call, I don't know. I don't know if it was like a for the retired people. I don't know what kind of hospital it was because we were little kids. But they had a big field out there. We used to always climb through the gate and we used to play football up there and tackle them, but now we was in the grass. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can't imagine getting tackled. Yeah, the only thing is, <laughs> yeah. but but people used to walk their dog up there too, so sometimes you have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. We're, um, were there gangs in your neighborhood? When oh, you were yeah, up? yeah. Uh, what, what, which ones do you remember? We had the Ghetto Brothers, we had yeah. the, the Tomahawks. And really around my way with Jolly Stompers. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they, they, they um, headquarters was right around the corner from my house on Crown, Crown Street and Schenectady. It's in like the basement of a apartment building. Okay, sure. I mean Montgomery Street. See Montgomery or Crown. Yeah. Yeah. So then I had a dude named Hatchie Man. He'd be from the Ghetto Brothers. He had all of the little kids in, in the Ghetto Brothers. We was on um, Junior Ghetto Brothers. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the only thing was, I, I was a Ghetto Brother when I went to a Jolly Stomper school. So, uh, you know, I really wear no colors or nothing like that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and one time I, I finally got a, I got a jacket, and I had ghetto brothers on the back. So, my mother didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. So she's she's working the day and come home at night. So one night she came home and I had the jacket and I threw it in the oven. We had the, the rotisserie <laughs> oven in the, in, the, in the house, the rotisserie on the bottom, and the oven on the bottom. So. I threw it in there, but I forgot about it. And one day she was warming up the oven, and you could smell something <laughs> burning. <laughs> it was the letters on my jacket were starting to burn. I had to take it out and throw it out the window. But you could still smell it in the house. She didn't know what it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, I said it was maybe something in the oven that's dirty. I cleaned the oven and stuff. Yeah, but it was all the letters melting up and going, oh, messing with the mess. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, did, did you, uh, did you, like, run into any uh, flack from, from the get, like the Jolly Stompers or any of the other gangs ever? No, well, I, I knew a lot of the Jolly Stompers because we used to go to school together and stuff. Yeah. They never really knew I was no ghetto brother anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't really walking around with no colors on, you know. Sure. Till all of us be together, it, it, it's something else, but not by myself, not, not no Jolly Stompers yeah, territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. used to wear colors. Yeah. So Absolutely. They could spot you. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh... In high school, did you have a major, or did you did you have like an idea of what you wanted to do after you graduate, or anything like that? No, well, after after a while, I had to take, get out of Brooklyn Tech, and I had to graduate from Wingate. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I went to Wingate for the last year and graduated, and then I uh, went to what is it, New York City College, the one that's downtown Brooklyn. I was taking up art and advertising there. Oh, art and advertising. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. But it. I should have took up architecture, but I took art and advertising, but I, I didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and then I got a job working on the, the toll bridge. My brother got me a job, so I used to work at the Midtown Tunnel. Oh, wow. Okay. So I used to have to go to school in the, in the morning, then leave there and, and go to work to the tunnel. Then after that, I had more classes at night. Yeah. Wow. After a while, it just it took That's a toll a on me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah. That's a lot to handle. Yeah. So Damn. I had to drop down. Drop down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you mentioned a little earlier uh, that you know you you had cartoon characters painted all in your basement. Which were some of the cartoons that you were drawn to the most when you oh. were growing up? We used to do a lot of. I used to do it. My nephew did like Thor and Luke Cage and all yeah. of those. But on my wall, I did like a Frankenstein dancing and a a girl with long hair, earrings dancing. Wow. I forgot what other, other characters was. But I did the girl on the train one time, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they bought a TV because they didn't come out that good. Don't it look like a 60-year-old hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll never forget that. That's funny. That's yeah, funny. But, but, but you, you originally did that character in your basement and then yeah. ended up on the train. That's, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Wow, wow. It came out better than my basement than it came out on the train, though. <laughs> I'm sure it's a little easier to yeah. paint in the basement yeah. than the train. Yeah. Well, it, was, it came out all right. Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah. yeah. Um, and... When you were growing up, what are things that you remember eating, either in your house or out, you know, in the neighborhood oh. or things like that? When we go out and hang out at night, there's only one place to eat, White Castle. White Castle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On Unicorn Empire Boulevard. We used to be down there, and all the gangs used to be down there, too. So, but they had like four parts that you could order. We used to be in there, and everybody laughing, and everybody drunk, and busting alcohol bottles, drinking beer in there. <laughs> so, one day we was down there one night, and the... They had a security guard, and this 
That's how we know. He kept messing with the security guard. He kept messing with him. He kept messing with him. And we was all high and stuff. And, and the, the cop shot him in the leg. Oh. But it was so funny. We couldn't stop laughing. It was, yeah. Even though it was so serious. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the way he screamed out, ah, like a little girl. We started laughing. said, don't you leave him alone. Leave him alone. And we all had to run separate ways and stuff. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But everybody used to be in White Castle at night. Yeah, yeah 24 for hours. Sure. For yeah. sure. And what about at home? At home, we I, I couldn't eat seafood, so anytime my mother cooked fish, I could. I, that's my excuse. I can go out and I can hang out all night because I can't be around the smell of fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, we yeah. had like regular food, chicken. Except my mother used to cook little. I, I couldn't stand it. Oh, yeah. She made me eat it. I, after I left home, I never ate it again. <laughs> no. I look at it and it makes my stomach turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. 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 They used to love it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I couldn't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And what about music uh, in your household? What did your parents listen to? Did they listen they to music? Calypso and reggae and stuff Calypso like that. Calypso and reggae, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I listened to um, hip hop and stuff like that. Sure. I used to play drums when I was younger. I used to play a, a bass, but I wasn't that good at the bass. I was better on the drums. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just something to pass the time by. Yeah, you for know. sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, were there, were, was like parties in the park, was that a thing in your in your part of Brooklyn when you were growing up? Yeah, they had, but you know, fights always break out. Yeah, everybody yeah, wanted to be yeah. tougher than everybody. And, you step on somebody's shoe, now you gotta have a fight and all that. Your house parties and all of that. Yeah. I yeah, know. it was bad. It was bad. I had to do a house party one time. My parents were out of town. Try to sneak it through a party and try to dollar to get in and all that. Yeah. Then they had, because after the dollar sound, they had the other guys called the Cats. Oh, the Cats, okay. Yeah. They came to my party, tried to crash my party and had to go to and get my brother in law and them. Come down and get them niggas out of my house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then Monday morning I had to go right back to school where they all was. So <laughs> they ain't they messed me. They just let it go. <laughs> I'm glad though, because I really didn't want to go to the building, man, because yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah, get out of the house party business. Right? Man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, house party's yeah. rough. Yeah. Always, always people trying to crash house party. Yeah. That was their thing on yeah. weekends. Right. We have to party at. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't need it, Mike. Right. <laughs> right? Let's go. So, you know? Dollar to get in there because they ain't got the dollar. They got on all kind of sheepskin pants and boom was like we all had on back there. So you got all that, nigga. You can pay a dollar to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go guard the way in and all that. Nah, we wasn't having that. So yeah, yeah let's talk about that. What, what was your, your fashion sense? Did you, yeah, I did you wear hip hop fashion? Like the yeah. Procas and the Adidas? Yeah, I had. Different I had. color converses? And yeah, first we, when I, when I when I got to the about 16, we, we were wearing Pumas and Adidas. But I had converses and all that. My mother didn't buy them. I had to buy them. Yeah, yeah. My mother, she bought me a pair of sneakers, man. I was, I was, <laughs> I was so mad at her. She, she went to some store. Where the sneakers was in like a round thing when you come in the door, it's one of them round things. A bunch of sneakers that got the little plastic, they got the two sneakers together and put that on to me. I'm looking at it like, yo, what can I do? I had all the sneakers. You, you, those are those kind of sneakers where you run and you stop and you're still going. <laughs> I couldn't go to school with those sneakers, man. I couldn't go to school. They're snapping your chest. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's because I had a pair of pro kids and they had wore out. Okay. All right. I, I took a piece of cardboard and put it in the bottom of those sneakers. I wore those. Before I wore the mother's sneakers, my mother bought me. I yeah. would not wear them to school. Yeah. I would yeah. never. Oh, what? I had to fight every day because somebody's going to be cracking jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't with it, man. Yeah, wow, yes. wow. So, did you have like a part time job in high school to get to buy sneakers? Or? No, was, we, um, after that, when I was a graffiti writer, we didn't buy nothing, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we used to go to stores and rack up. One time we went to, uh, I think it was a. Ever hard fate with some some store. Everybody just grabbed a bunch of boxes of sneakers. When we got back at the train station, we just if you wore a ten and I have an eleven or you switch like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I bought maybe two or three pairs of pumas in my life. Yeah. Never bought no Adidas, because we always got Adidas. Yeah. Yeah. But like the the green pumas and the red pumas, those are like my special occasion sneakers. You don't want them to get dirty. You wear them sure. like to parties and stuff like that. Other than that, you wear the whites or the regular colors. The green and red ones are the special ones. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so you, do, um, <coughs> you think it's good that we can go into the, the style writing questions? So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll sure. probably circle back around. You want to circle back? Sure, right. why not? Why not? All right, so let's, let's, let's get to 
into your writing career? Uh, what, what was your first introduction to style writing, if you can remember? Oh, the style lettering? Let me see. I used to always watch all the new pieces coming out. I used to see um, when, when Cliff and them was out, when he did the one with the, the, uh, the Charlie Brown and all those, I used to see those. Yeah, 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 I used to see that. I used to see a lot of Blades back in the days when he had them. That's when he, to me, that's when he did his best stuff was he did his car with two Blades on it, with two dancing girls on the end, and the background was black. That was a pretty car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, a, yeah, yeah, he had yeah. a one with a Woody Woodpecker. Mm. He had one with a band. And he had the the one with John 150 with the with the eyeball in the middle. Mm. I used okay, to love that yeah, piece yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to watch um, like pedal pieces. We do like words and worms and riff. Let's see who else? Um, Palo, of course. So where where did you see these trains at? Um, <coughs> right in, cause at the, they have at the bridge in the Bronx, but where else? Where else? We, we had um right at the Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. That's where the yeah. bridge was. Okay, right. tell, tell us about that. that right yeah, well, Dash, Dash introduced me to that to that bench because it'd be the twos, three, fours, and fives. Okay. Pass by because in the middle was the, the express trains on on outside be the one, the twos and the threes. Yeah. Yeah, so he brought me up there and started introducing me to some people and stuff. I think that's where uh, Mr. Allen on all of them used to be at. But I I, I started writing after Stim Stim had died. I wrote after that, so I never met him. Excuse me, but I met um. Was Stem uh, T O P? Huh? Nah, he was P Y B. That's why I don't know. Some people be. P Y B. Oh, oh, oh. Nah, three Y B. Three Y B. Three Y B. Yeah, Stem and T were three Y B. And then he's the one that got executed on the train. Yeah, yeah, oh, Stem. Now before my time though, I think I came a little after he died. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That was a that was a real right. big big deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. but everybody know as a writer. You don't go, you let his piece ride, you don't go over that. Yeah, yeah. That's a no no in graffiti. Like, like solid dot. You know, if you if a solid piece is still running, you don't go over that. Yeah, yeah. You know, anybody that died, you don't go over their piece, like Stem and Solid, especially. Yeah. You don't go over their piece. Absolutely. You may get a beat down for that one. Yeah. Now, Solid, solid was, uh, with, uh, Solid was Bollet, um, Bot Brother. Bot Brother, right. Yeah, Solid One. And that was, was he? Was T.O.P.? I mean, I was... No, nah, uh, he was T.F.P. Uh, T.F.P. Yeah. T.F.P. was around at that time? Yeah, I think that's who... I think it's... Between him and Bot, I think that started T.F.P. Okay, him and Bot. Yeah. Okay. See, this is what people don't know. From T.F.P., Mono, Doc, and Slug, and O.G., and all that was in T.F.P. And they branched off when when O.G. went to move to Staten Island, and they made the Fabulous Five. Ah. So, so now... Family Five is TFP too, so we tag both now, cause we're all the same. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah. Now, now TFP yeah. was. I thought. Fantastic oh, Partners. I thought. I thought Fab Five was first. No, nah, TFP was first. Okay. Cause OG used to write with TFP. He used to write with Vo and all of that. And I think Palo was TFP. Butch and Chase was TFP. And OG was original TFP. Mono and Doc were TFP. Yeah, so they branched off and made the Fabulous Five. Yeah, okay. wow. But, right. but back then, it was the five of them was um, with Doc, Mono, Slug, OG, and Professor Two, 165. Mm. Right, so. All right, so what, what years were we talking about? Like, 75? When they, when they were right? Like, like when, they, when you were seeing this, as this Oh, this is like 73, 74, because... I used to take the train to school and everything, and to my cousin's house stuff. Most I used to see a lot of comets, yeah, a lot of ends, mm-hmm. and a lot of blades. I used to see a lot of blades and T. And who else I used to see a lot? Then like seventy four, seventy five, I started seeing you know, the throw guy O I and T I one forty nine and D Y. Mm-hmm. All those were the throw guys. They was they was like trying to. Put their name on every train, but in was the true king of of doors. Nobody was getting down on him. Right, right. You know? he, he was top. T-O-P. Yeah, yeah. Dodd partners, right? Yeah. So okay, so you see these guys in writing, and did you did you have a black book, or you just you just saw the trains and and you, you mentioned a little bit about somebody bringing you in to the, the graffiti arts kind of movement, just yeah. introducing you to it. Yeah, well, um, from around my way, I started writing with them guys, but 
then you know, you start finding out when you meet other people, like the guys that used to go around, they they brother that was into graffiti was named Falcon Seven Eighty Nine. Mm -hmm. So Falcon used to know Llama and Dash. So I, but I had met Dash and Llama. Dash kind of like took me under his wing and showed me a lot of, a lot of uh, things about graffiti. He the one that showed me how to get down into Utica. Mm. And he the one that showed me really, you know, how to do some letters, some letters and stuff. So I, when I was doing Thor's with him. Then I met the guys from East New York, all the top boys, OI and 2729 and all of them guys, PO 137. And you know, it was it was all right because you just hitting trains anyway. So, yeah. But just doing two letters and then go to the next car, two letters and just, you know, see. To me, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Yeah. So, yeah. Like that, it, it's the only thing that I remember when I used to go to the bench and watch trains. You always remember the burners, always. Yeah. But the dogs, you see them. It's like you see the same shit all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. But the bright color burners what got to me. That's that's what I wanted to do. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, so let's let's break it down a little bit. But before we get to breaking down throw ups and burners, let's just just tell us a little bit about like how how slave came about and did you did you have a name before slave? So you maybe you were tagging some other name before. on the trains? Yeah, well maybe in black books or and then oh, you yeah. know maybe you were tagging early in black books. And then you eventually went to the trains, but... No, I, I, I on the train parts, I started with R-O-3. What's your name? R-O-3. Uh, uh, well, my middle name was Ricardo, so I took the R and the O from there. Okay. So okay. Ricardo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And where, where did the three come from? Huh? Let us put three. It sounded good. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. So right. I was doing that for a while, like... In the 74 to 75. Yeah. 74 to 75. Did you right. start off with Magic Marker? Or huh? Did you start off with On the trains? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started off with paint. You, oh, you, you started straight right into it. Yeah. Right yeah. Because wow. I, I can't tag. I can't tag for shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bother with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I ain't going to go to a yard and lay up and go on inside the train. No, I want something bright on the outside. Absolutely. But I couldn't tag for shit, so that's the real reason I never tag. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to lie about that. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. tag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so, but, yeah. but why did you feel comfortable with the spray can? Even that's hard, right? Yeah, but you know, we, the guy I was writing with, that's what they, they were doing outside, so that's how I really got into the outsides. Oh, but, so the guys yeah. you were meeting were doing the outside. Yeah, right? they were doing the outside. Yeah. But they used to hit inside, but that it wasn't me, because you get on the train, you see all these different characters, you can't read all of that, because there's so yeah. many of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go over each other and all, nah, I'm going outside, be right there by myself. Oh! They can see it, yeah. Yeah, so you can see it. Yeah. Right. So you would write R03 on trains? Yeah, just doing like silver, throw up two letters. Okay. Throw up, silver, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because right. you get a lot, of, a lot out of a can just doing two letters, yeah. and hardly filling it in, you can do a bunch of pieces. Did you ever take pictures of R03, or you don't know of any no. existing now? Uh, there's a picture. Somebody sent me a picture of one. Okay. But I, I never we we never knew how to take pictures. But then um, when they started doing the uh, the one ten films with the you could mail in the envelopes for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We used to rack those. Right. But I take some pictures, but then I had a guy named Rappel. So some pictures I take, I trade with him for some pictures that he take. And you know, cause you make you get the pictures, you can take the negatives and make different copies. Yeah, so yeah, I used to yeah. trade pictures with the pictures that I really wanted. I didn't really take that many pictures, but I had to get a lot of pictures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because other people would take the pictures. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, did, did you, um, where, did, where did you rack? What kind of stores you racked up? Did you, some guys travel the whole city racking paint. Did you? Yeah. I did. I did that. You know, I, I can't really pinpoint which stores I used to go to because yeah. I, I racked up in Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island. I went one time. I never went to Jersey and all that for yeah, racket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, we, we, this racket. You be at your, be at 149 on a Monday morning. You're, everybody looking at the new pieces. Then after <laughs> rush hour, everybody just say, "Yo, let's go racket." Yeah. And there we go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't really remember where we used to go. Somebody have a where? spot. Just somebody else have a spot. Somebody else. Did, did you have like a, that. a favorite brand that you like to use? Um, Rustolian for filling in and Red Devil for outlining. Okay. Or filling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, they used to have Krylon, but back then, Krylon was thicker paint. Mm -hmm. It was thicker than it is now. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it still was kind of, like, you had, like, you had to go over it, like, maybe twice back then for the 
be a nice color. They have beautiful colors. But when it's going to Utica, that one part that's big, uh, then they got the part that's kind of close like this. So when you use Krylon, it's like a big cloud of paint all around you. And, oh, man. You come out like you was at a, at a, a strip club with sprinkles, sprinkles all on your face and stuff. And, uh, and I had a blue snorkel coat. And one time I went painting and it came out. And it like it's, you know that monochrome paint when you turn one way and look blue, you turn green. That's how my coat started looking. So, yeah. So I used that. But one day I took all the crylons that I had left and I did a a piece. Everybody looked at that piece too, but I just did it all crylon. Because I just wanted to get rid of all the crylon. Yeah. And when I came home, I had all the sparkles on my face, all in my nose, all painted, all oh, mess. So I got rid of it all. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, that's great, that's great. All right, so you, you had an RO3, and, and, and well, before I get into uh, some of the other stuff, what, what were the lines you were hitting the most? Were you were you staying mostly in, in the Brooklyn yards? or? No, I used to go to Brooklyn, I used to go to um, Esplanade, Baychester. The only thing I didn't, I didn't hit no elevated lines because I was scared of heights and I, I just can't do heights. Because right. yeah, yeah. when I first time I went out, I was on a four line somewhere and, and you know, everybody going to hit that, so I'm saying, yeah, I'm going too. And like, when I start walking out, the wood start going like this, it start cracking and creaking. It was, it was high up there too. It wasn't high like us. I got about like, moving from here to the bookcase. I said, nah, bro. I let them niggas go. I said, oh, I, I came back. But you only got, a, you only got that, that one pipe was to be the handrail. Yeah. And the wood was all rotted and you step on it and go like this and be cracking. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Police come, what do I can do? I can't run on this. I can't even walk on it. I couldn't do it. I never went back. Wow. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, man. I don't know how they do it. They talk about the cops come, you, you squeeze between the plank or something and go down the elbow. You can't, I, can't, I can't even walk. I'm walking like, like a little baby trying to learn how to walk. No. Now, was this too, now you, you mentioned a little bit about cutting school, so cutting school is like daylight time, so you can hit a, you can hit a train in the daylight, or you had to wait they, they had They had two layups in the daytime. That, they had layups in the day that you, you can hit, I think Baychester used to lay up in the day, but Kingston on the on twos and threes used to be from from halfway from Utica, not from, it used to be from Kingston and North Street, it lay, like this, lays up on the express track, that was a daytime of uh, layup where you could hit. And then they had Utica used to lay up in the daytime, they lay up in between the rush, between the morning rush hour and the, and the afternoon rush hour, Kingston and, used to be there. It'd be about three, four, five trains laid up, all in, all in line. Oh. Right, so, because you had a local track and express train, you lay up on the express track. Right. And then they had like a, a ledge to the side, to, to, the, to the door. Mm -hmm. So you can go there and you can do top to bottoms and all of that. Wow. Every time I went in Kingston, I got chased out though. Because the little kids used to come there and break the windows and it started getting hot. But but, it, but one time it was a good layoff. I, I don't know what happened, because I went there twice, I know I went back. Because mm. it was, I don't get chased out. Yeah. But, but all the old guys said they used to go there all the time in the daytime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit. Okay, so what, define the term throw up. And then we're gonna, after throw up, we'll talk about burning. All right. But, yeah, throw up is like, like the simplest letters you could do. And because you want it simple and you want it fast. You want to be able to do, like if you have two letter name, mm -hmm. you could do a throw up in like five minutes. Because you use a fat cap, then do an outline real fast. Just miss, you just, they just missed it in. They don't call it in solid. Mm -hmm. They just miss it in and do an outline around it. No three, no nothing. Just keep going down. Go down, hit this train. Yeah. Then you go down and hit that train. You go down. Because you hit all them cars, when they get to the yard, they be splitting them up so it'll be on different trains oh. and going, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like that's where in was the king of that because he used to go. They said he, they, I never went with a paint, but they said he used to go down, and do all the fillings, all in the yard, and then come back and do all the outlines going all the way down. Wow! And he was the first one I ever seen that did in all the way across the train. Then then he did in on the bottom of the train and then in on the top of the train. <laughs> first person I ever seen do that. Wow. Yeah. yeah, then I guess one time he got tired of writing in all the time, then he used to write B.I. So I don't know if that means bad in or something. But, oh, <laughs> but he's, he's king of every single line. There was no line you go on where you ain't see in on the line. Oh, wow. wow. And, I, 
They said he was the one that I think invented the pull in and pull out. And that's like, like in Utica Avenue, is the last stop for the express train. So the train pulls in, if I just let anybody out of Utica, then it goes back behind the station and it sits there for a little while because it's on the, so when you come in, you're on the top. So it goes on the top lane and then it goes into the tunnel and wait there for a while. Then it comes back out on the bottom, going back, back, uptown. So when it goes back there, the driver pulls the train back, then he gets out and he has to walk to the front. Okay. So, but they'll be in the tunnel hiding. Right. So when he gets out and run, they come from behind like a little thing they got back there, and they be hitting the trains before yeah. it goes back out. Wow. wow. That's the pulling the pull out. Pulling the pull out. Yeah. That's class. That yeah. could be like 30 minutes, right? Hmm? Like yeah, in, between, in between. Yeah, it goes back. Maybe about like 15 minutes. So. 15, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. The train sit there, then comes back to, for it to be the first stop again. So they had it on a few lines, but I think it was the one that discovered how to do that. Wow. That's what I heard, but. So you get up quick like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, after a while, I get the tunnel start smelling the paint. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what is the, you, you mentioned a, a term, burner. What's the burner? Burner is like, like when you put more effort into your piece, like you're going to fill it in solid so you know, it's, it's, you can tell it's, it's painted, it's painted really good. And yeah. Sometimes you do arrows, you do curves, you know, you might add a little something to the S or to the H or to your M or have arrows swinging off the letters and stuff like that. That's burner. Like it's more like creativity that you, you're showing your skills in doing lettering. You know, you're like bending the letters around and then you're putting 3Ds on it, fancy colors, designs and all that in it. Because you see one, you you, you you could just be like a regular person on on a station. When you see it, you might not understand what it says, but you're looking at it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. It catches your eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, and so the uh, so it's but the piece is the piece of burner the same? So huh? a piece is more of a the piece. Oh, are they both the same? Yeah, piece is a piece, but a a burner is like I could do a straight letter, nice one. That's like a, it's a piece. That's a it's piece. A, it's it's a, like short for masterpiece. That's what you call it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then a burner is just. Like like more wild styles, oh. like wild style of your oh. letters. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Great. All right. So uh, let's let's go in. Let's get into slave a little bit. Like when when did you start doing using the word slave? Oh, in seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, and I this is where my head was at. I I did a silver slave, right? The the S was this big, but then when it got down to the E, it went like small. It was small. But in my eyes. I did a bad burner. I, know, <laughs> I, I was so proud. My chest stuck out when I got old. And then the, when, when people saw it, they're like, damn, what's wrong? You let it go down like that. Just, then I started to learn, you know, more and more and more. But to me, that was, I burnt the line with that piece. But that oh, shit was, what, what line but, was that on your mind? Uh, on the IRTs. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got okay. a picture of it somewhere, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's silver. Oh, wow. That's my first burner. Somebody That's sent silver. it to me. Okay. Oh, nice, right. nice. Nice, nice, nice. And you already kind of explained the story how you came up with the word yeah. slave. So what what was your first introduction to the um, Fabulous Five? Well, um, I, I, I heard a lead and them, they were doing Scott the Bob and stuff. And one day I was at Brooklyn Bridge and I think Doc, Dr. Lee was there, or somebody was there. We were just watching trains and then they, they asked me, do I write? I said, I write slave and we introduced each other. And um, they used to see a couple of my pieces. And we were just talking about it. Then I think I was box, boxing somebody on a, on a platform. And then they said, yo, you in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I right. forgot who I was boxing. It was boxing somebody, some other writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah they just liked me from the start. And plus, they saw I was doing nice pieces. So they put me in a family fire. I was like the last one inducted. Okay, okay. Wow. And then, uh, so you, were you a member of top? Oh, for a minute? When I, yeah, when I did Thorps. When I did the Thorps, I was top. Okay. So that's the, the R yeah. partners? Huh? Yeah, the R partners with, with OI. I think OI put me in. I was driving OI2. Um, I never went with TI 149, but he used to be coming to my house all the time. 
Because my basement, a lot of writers been to my basement. They can tell you about the cartoons on the walls and all that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. So they can come in. We used to smoke weed in the basement, drink beers and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So was James Sox a member at your time? I, I, I never knew him that day. You never knew James Sox? No, I met him lately. I didn't really know him, you know. But I've met him since I came back from, from Florida. I met him and hung out with him for a few times and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Because he was an odd partner real early on as well. But you yeah. didn't meet him back then. No, so, no. Right. I never seen him when we were writing. I, all right. So um, now you went, you went to Fab Five. And some of the names in the Fab Five, you mentioned Doc, you mentioned right. Lee, yeah, the original. OG. Yeah, the original Fabulous Five. Excuse me, with Doc, Mono, Slug, Doc, Mono, Slug, OG, and Professor 2, 165. Mm -hmm. Those originals. So when when I got into it, it was with me, Lee, Mono, Doc, and Slug. But then it had the, the other writers were more like more the gang members like Blood and Dell and and um, I forgot all the other guys' names. See, a bunch of them, Cowboy, and it was a bunch of guys. They were more like towards the gangster part, the gang, mm -hmm. Fat Five, Five. But the main writers were me, Lee, Mono, Doc, and Slug. Mm -hmm. That started brought the Family Five back. And you were uh, a Brooklyn based crew? No, it? no. See, I, I'm from Brooklyn. Lee is from Manhattan. Doc, Mono, and Slug were from Staten Island. Um, all right, so it's great. So what, how, how, what was your experience with black books? Did you write in black books before you were going to York? No, well, you know, sometimes I, I take a piece of paper and draw on it. Black books wasn't really my thing because I couldn't just sit in one spot all the time. Be, I, be in my house doing, like, every now and then we have a bunch of people over and we just play around in black books and stuff. Like when Naki used to come to my house, we used to smoke weed and, and Drawing the black books and stuff. Now, sometimes it depends on the situation, but I mean, I, I, I'll go and rack up black books and rack up ink and all that, but most of the time, sometimes I just gave them away. Yeah. Well, it really ended because I couldn't tag, so I really wasn't into all of that. So you'll go, or you'll go to the yard and you'll just do it by inspiration? No, so I might, I might take a piece of paper out and, and do an outline and then take it with me. Or maybe like the day before, I might do an outline. Yeah, every now and then you get the feeling you just draw on the paper and do an outline. Saving stuff, but sometimes I do an outline, and then we don't got high smoking weed and all that. I go to the, to the left to do it, and I just change my mind and do something else. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah, plenty yeah. times I did that or, or change the letters on it and stuff like that. Sure, right, yeah. right. So, uh, so what, what was it like um, hanging with Lee Lee Quinones? Oh, we used to go to his house all the time. He's he still on the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we used to all go there. His mother and father knew he wrote. Yeah. Yeah, he had no problems. His, <laughs> he had a, a, a dresser always full of paint, all drawers full of paint all wow. the time, all the time. He can rack. He can rack. We used to go there and hang out and stuff. Me, Lee, Mono, Doc, I was being out drinking beer and stuff, but Lee never drank or smoked. Oh, really? Okay. No, he never. Wow. Yeah, so what? Well, well, he got his inspiration from, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was seriously talented because yeah. like, I would tell him, Lee had a picture on the wall of a Bruce Lee. And all the times, all the years I, I was at his house, I swore it was a, uh, a photograph till it fell one time the frame broke and we picked it up and it was a pencil drawing. I was amazed by that. I was seriously amazed. Then I realized he could really draw because one day we was at the Brooklyn Bridge Station at the, at the bench and the, the train comes like on a curve. And he was sitting down there, he sketched the whole thing with the train coming on the curve and it looked at, just like, like where we was. Wow. Yeah, oh, he was an artist. Most of the time we did old cars. He really amazed me because by the time I might finish one full top to bottom, he might have almost two cars finished. Wow. Yeah, he was an amazing artist. His wow. mind was all. So, so, uh, okay, so Lee, obviously he's, he's well known for doing those whole cars. So you would do top to bottom, would it be the whole car? Well? Yeah, yeah, I did the whole cars. But he would do two cars in the time yeah. you would do. Yeah, sometimes you do two, sometimes you do one. The two of them, he might do them like when he's by himself. Because 
I never went to no layup by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he, yeah. he, he, I guess he just like the concentration because he can, he ain't got to watch out for nothing or nobody because he, he's just painting. He's just painting. Yeah, he has this instinct. So but he, he can, he, he's really, he has what he, in his mind, what he's going to do. He's just going to do it. And he, he can paint two cars. Yeah. Easy, you know. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's how y'all painted the whole train. Uh, oh, pretty, pretty. <laughs> yeah, we had we did the ten cars, and that was a crazy night because we we always talked about doing the whole train all the time. Every yeah. but we was gonna do it with like all of the best riders on the line. We all get together and do it one night. Yeah, we was gonna we was gonna get Butch and Casey and them, and and we were gonna try to get Blade and all of them. We could never get everybody, you know, organized. Or some people want to do it, and some people don't. So decided to do it ourselves. But we always talked about it. But then one night, Moto Lee and, and Moto and Lee were together, and, and Lee said, "Man, we're gonna do it tonight. We're gonna do it tonight." <laughs> but I didn't know nothing about it. I just happened to come by Lee's house, and they were there. And they were getting ready to go. They said, "Man, we're gonna do the ten car." I thought they were just joking. <laughs> but then when I seen the, all the paint, suitcases, and all this with paint, wow! I said, yeah, I said, you wanna go? I said, yeah. So I went. <laughs> yeah. It's, his mother made us sandwiches and stuff like that, man. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. We had stuff to drink, eat. Oh, yeah. how, how, how long did it take? Huh? The first night we went, we started, and um, Doc and Slug, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were on Staten Island, and they, they came into the tunnel. But they, they were all high and stuff, so they came in banging on the train with flashlights and stuff, making us think they were cops. <laughs> and, and they chased us out. <laughs> well, but they, they but because the the train was coming down in the tunnel, and we were all running on this side of the train, and Lee had to jump in front of the train to go out to exit, and I was trying to go up the tunnel, but it's only like this much, and the train was coming down, and I was trying to get up through there, so we all had split up. Mono and Doc, I mean Mono and Lee went one way, and I went out through the tunnel way because I live like three or four blocks. But you know where I don't know if you know Brooklyn where Lincoln Terrace Park is at. No. Yeah, well, right where the train comes out of Utica and then goes out to Sutter Avenue on the two line to go into Brownsville. Okay. So when it comes out, out of the tunnel, you can climb down the, the trestle right there and you'd be in Lincoln Terrace Park. Mm-hmm. Everyone, prostitutes and all that used to be out there back then. Yeah. yeah so I, I went home from there. I think, I think Lee told me they walked. Wow. From, from down there because they didn't want to get on the train. They didn't want to get caught by the police because they thought that, that Slugger Doc was the police. And then... I think when they went, when, when they got back to, to Lee House, I think they got on a train somewhere. And then they found out it was them, and Lee was mad. Oh, he was mad. <laughs> but they, I didn't get to go back with them, and my, one of my cars was unfinished. I think they went over that one. Because they went back the next day, because train and Lee was a weekend. Oh, oh she had yeah. time yeah. to do the 10 cars. Yeah, because oh. see, when we did the 10 cars, all the paint we were using for each car, mm-hmm. we put it inside the train, inside the seat of the train, and, and closed the seat down. Wow. So for every car, so that was slick. yeah, All right, that was slick. yeah. That so was if, if anything happened, we can get, go back and get the paint or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they came down. This they banging on the track, big flashlights coming down like they were the police. We just oh, gone, yeah. yeah. Oh, but then, then they went back the next day and they finished up the whole ten cars. Wow, for for yeah. for, for that uh, for that uh, train, did y'all have like? Was it un, like just one piece, or were there separate pieces on each um, each car? Each car was without name, big from the top to the okay. bottom. Yeah, each yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle, I we had a picture of this. The middle was said, said "Fabulous Five and had the Mickey Mouse. That was oh, the middle one. Okay, okay, that was okay. the middle car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was 1977, right? Yeah. 1977. Wow. And, oh, when they pulled out to the train, the train station. The regular passengers were going crazy over it. <laughs> going crazy, yeah, because you could. It wasn't all that wild. It was like letters you could read oh. and cartoon characters and everything. It was all fresh and oh, you could still smell the paint when it came wow. out the tunnel. It was beautiful. Wow. Wow. Everybody, everybody was in shock because it was full ten cars. Wow, full ten cars. Yeah, they were and running. Just pictures of that, right? Yeah. Wow. I don't got the pictures. I got the, I got the Family Five part. Sure. I got that picture. Yeah, that yeah. but I think Lee got all of them. I think Lee got all of them. All ten cars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was beautiful. So did did, uh, did any of the famous photographers shoot that train? Like Alfred Cooper or Henry Chaffin? Or? I don't know because when they came out, 
I don't know what years Henry and them came because um, 78 I wrote some and I quit at the, by the beginning of 79. So I really didn't meet Henry and them until one day we went to um, Dondi's house. Dondi invited us over and um, what's the lady name? Martha Cooper? No. My, uh, Martha Cooper was there. Yeah. Yeah, Dondi surprised us with that one. Because I don't know if you ever seen it's a picture with you, you see some writers in Dondi's room. Mm. Uh, let me see if I got the picture. But that picture is a famous graffiti picture. If you when I show it to you, you'll know it. But um, that's in that in that photo, you'll see some of my my, my black books because Donnie's looking at one one of my black books. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said Donnie's house. Yeah, we was in Donnie's bedroom. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the first time I met Donnie. And this is around seventy eight. Okay. Yeah, around yeah. Well, it's it's a famous picture. When I find it, you, as soon as you see it, you'll know it. All right. And uh, so. When, cause Lee, Lee was the star of Wild Style, the movie, right? So were yeah. you, were you hanging with Lee when they were making that movie? No, I, no, cause when I, in, in 79, yeah. I had bought a car, so that was the rest of it, that was that. And now I'm chasing women and making money. Oh, you're chasing women? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck graffiti, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was done with graffiti. Yeah, yeah. Right. Cause I was hanging out being gangster and all that. Yeah. No. <laughs> But then they did that, and um, but then like, from then to like, I think 83, I, I moved down to Florida. Oh. I went to go visit my parents, because they retired and went down there. Yeah. When I went down there, it was just so, so easy living down there. I stayed longer than I thought I would. That's, that's the reason why I lost my black books. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was wow. so easy down there, and I'm, I'm saying, damn, these niggas can't get no money down here. <laughs> why they can't get a job, like, first couple days. And then the dude told me I couldn't find a job down here. Hard, oh, I got a job like the next day. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, this is trying to learn. It was, but it was like a little peaceful time I needed anyway, you know, to get out of New York and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was, well, that's, I must have liked it because I stayed down there to like 2010. Oh, yeah. For, oh, yeah. From 79 to 2010? Uh, now from, from 83 to about 2010. Okay, that's when, that's when you're down there. Wow. Yeah, wow. so I've done it for a long time. Did you, so you retired from a job? Huh? No, no, I got a job down there, but when I was up here, I was working a little bit, then hustle, then work, hustle. Yeah. I went down there, you know, got met a girl, I got married down there, had a baby down there and everything. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but we, when we got divorced, it was like 2009, 2010, that's when I came back to New York. Okay, yeah. My mother yeah. and father, yeah, passed away, so I didn't really had no family down there, so. Yeah. Came back to New York with all my family there. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. How many kids you have? Got one daughter. One daughter. Now I got a granddaughter too, so. Wow, are they, yeah. they in Florida still? Huh? Yeah, yeah, they're still in Florida. Florida. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so Dondi, did, uh, did you know much about Dondi? I mean, obviously he was famous, but. Uh, but when I, when I met him, he was, a, he was just kind of starting out. Oh, he was just starting out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't, you know, it was, it was all right back then, but. See, well, not, he was coming out of the Bronx, so not. Hung out at my house for a while, and I guess he went. He was hanging out with Donnie too. And that's where I kind of think Donnie got some of his style from. Knock mm -hmm. yeah. was seven. Yeah, back then Knock was one of the baddest dudes out in 77, 78, and all of them. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of the, he. Was, yeah, his pieces was wasn't all complex, but it was just different. It was nice. He was he was the man. To, if you want to try to burn somebody, that's who you had to try to burn. You have to be here. Yeah, but yeah, he's made people burn him. Knock. Okay. Yeah. Where, uh, did you know where he, where he lived? Did he live yeah. in Brooklyn or the Bronx? No, he lived in the Bronx. I don't know where it stopped. It was on the, on the four line. On the four line? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I went to his house a couple of times. He used to come out of Brooklyn and hang out at my house and stuff, smoking and drinking and all that. Yeah, we hang out a lot. Yeah. So, but he's, uh, do you hang out with him now these days? I've seen him a couple of times since I've been back. I really, I really don't hang out. I, I don't even hang out with them old times have so we painting on the wall or something like that. I really don't hang out, hang out, hang out with graffiti writers. Yeah. But when it's warm, yeah, we all hang out and barbecue and all kind of stuff like that. And paint yeah. on the walls and stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and go to shows and stuff. But when I go to shows, we be doing the same thing, smoking and drinking. I don't smoke no more, so yeah. I'm just drinking the beer and stuff. But, but I mean, we all, that's what I'm saying. From way back then, all of us are still friends. Yeah. Till today, now, those are friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were, were, there, were there crews that you all uh, uh, ever kind of had uh, beef with or, or things like that? I, I, I know some people up here in the Bronx 
you know, like the Morris Park crew would give them give them shit sometimes and yeah. things like that. What about y'all? Oh, no, we were right. Nobody was messing with Fallon 5. Yeah. Crazy? Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody messed with us. Nobody yeah. messed with us. But I heard that afterwards, they, this is what I don't get is when they when the MPC crew came, they got cap going over everybody. Yep. I can't understand why guys, all these writers, wouldn't get cap. Yeah. You know? Find him and yeah, and yeah. <laughs> that was our rules back in our days. We didn't play like that. Yeah, yeah. He was going over people, burners, you know. Yeah. So that's the part I never understood. And then now people they'll do a piece and if Cap is there. They say, Cap, do a cap over my piece so they can take a picture of it. You crazy. You think I spent $60 worth of paint to put on a wall, and you're going to let somebody go right over in front of you so you could just take a picture of a cap over your name? Mentality is, is, is crazy. I just don't wow. get it. If you go over me, even on a wall, I'm mad now. We're going to have to fight. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if it's a wall. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that is ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. But that, that's, back then, you, you go over somebody, you either going to have to get them some more paint, or you had to fight. That's how our rules was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, cause I went over, when I first started, I went over to a dude named P.O. And I gave him two cans. I didn't really know much about the graffiti thing then. I was just a kid. I gave him two cans. Cause they said he was a, um, the, the boss of P.A.L. or some shit. <laughs> yeah. But then I ended up knowing him though, cause he was, he was part of top. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. I hung out with him stuff. I came to a little old cheap cat from Walgreens, some old cheap paint. So <laughs> 99 cent paint. Because, you know, if you don't give them the paint, either you're going to fight or they're going to, every time you do a piece, they're going to want to go over your piece. Yeah. So yeah. it's cheaper to get in two cans. Yeah. Plus, he was a boxer, so I, I could find a little bit, but I don't know what I could do with somebody fighting the PAL for belts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so did you, so when, um, when Lee started painting canvases, you like you had totally like left graffiti completely, and you didn't want to paint canvases, right? No, when that when that ever came, I was I was already caught from graffiti long ago. Yeah, because I think they started in what in eighty something. In eighties, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I wasn't even dealing with graffiti period. Alright, so turn it Yeah, no, no, no. I wish I was. I'd be right with him. Yeah, 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 yeah,
spent a lot of time on the letters. Did you try to perfect your lettering at the time? Or, uh, so, you know, as, as the time is, we keep doing it, you know, I might do a piece, then I might see it right by. And I look at it and I say, man, I should have did the E this way. Mm. And so then my next piece, then I'm going to do it that way. You know, just keep making like little changes and stuff, but I was trying not to make none of my pieces look like what I did before. I yeah. always try to make all of them look different. Mm -hmm. You know, did different S's and all of that. I used to do some burning S's, boy. Yeah. yeah. yeah nobody wasn't busting my S's. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, so I just, you know, did a lot of, you know, just getting there, just feel it, you know, because you want to do, you want to be one of the top writers on the line. Right, right. You might right. can't be the best, but you can, but you be in the top five. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, so that's how we do it. And we want to do style like somebody else, because then they'll say, oh, you're you, you just biting off of his style. You're just biting off of his style. That's why everybody's style looks different. Parts, right? Looks different. Chain looks yeah. different. I look different. Yeah. That's how, you know, that's how we was. We wasn't really battling each other back then. We were just all doing nice pieces. Yeah. Mm. You say, oh shit, that shit ain't nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. So now we, we say they piece look nice. Next, now I'm always saying next week I gotta burn that shit. So that's how we were doing. But we were all friendly. So, so you, there was no guarantee you could actually see all the pieces you did on the train because the trains would change a lot. Because yeah, but they would exchange the cars and stuff like that. And so, right. if you if you weren't there at a certain time, you you might not see the piece that you did. Yeah, well, see if I do it on the weekend, if I do a piece on the on the weekend, Monday morning it's gonna ride. Okay. So yeah. that's why on Monday morning you used to see a lot of people at 149 seat at the bench. Yeah. Because yeah. they come up there to see all the new pieces that people did that weekend. See, that's how you can go. That's why you be so many people, because everybody know Monday morning when the trains come out, there's going to be a lot of new pieces. Yeah, you better catch it then. Yeah, yeah. So we'd be off here at the bench watching all the nice pieces come by. See, that's so Yeah. So it's 149 in the Bronx. So yeah, up, yeah. Up yeah, all, all the time. Every Monday morning I was there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And cause one day I was there skipping school. My father came driving on the train. <laughs> and I could have swore he looked with me right in my face, but he must didn't see me. I ain't come home that night till around 11 or 12 at night. I scared he, was, he saw me, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he didn't see me, he didn't see me. Wow. I get so many people in, in the train station, he's just watching the, you know, the signal lights while you're driving yeah, the train. Well, I yeah. swear he looked me right in my eyes. I thought that shiver boy, oh shit. I said, oh, I'm finna get my you ass off when I go home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so tell us about 149 Street in the Bronx. Tell us about it, if you can remember. Yeah, we used to come in there, it's been 149, like, take the 205. Be in the last car from Brooklyn. So when you get out, the bench is right there because we're at the end of the station. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you get out. Riders already be there because before the morning rush hour. Yeah. Everybody get there in the morning because rush hour stops about 9, 9 30. So we be out there like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. That's early. Yeah, yeah. You want everybody want to see the pieces. Some people, I guess, went, went to school and they see the pieces in the afternoon rush hour. We used to go out there early in the morning. so. It's like, like a ritual. We all get up there Monday morning and watch all the pieces. And as soon as rush hour stop, everybody go, let's go racking. <laughs> that's what it do. We're a bunch of us go racking. Some, some people might break off and go on their own. Some people break off and go on their own. We might all go together. Cause yeah. Really? Let's go racking the whole day, racking up paints. Rack up the paint, sneak on the train. We go to um, stores, grocery stores. We might steal some you know, um, the Bustello. But then you sell a Bustello, you get some money in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, we, or we'll go to a supermarket and steal sandwich meat and all that, and bread and all that, make our sandwiches, and keep racking. Yeah. We didn't pay for anything. <laughs> nothing. We have bags of paint, sneak on the train with it. We didn't care. Yeah. yeah, we didn't pay for nothing. Or, or we had um, the old bus passes for the school. Yeah, yeah. The, red, the different colors, we would make them and put in one of them little things, like, like we got a real bus pass, and go on the train with that and stuff. Oh, thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's uh, that's, that's, that's uh, amazing. And so, you guys didn't treat graffiti writing as like a, a crime, almost like a, it wasn't like a crime to you guys. You guys were just, even though it was vandalism, right? To a certain extent, you guys just went out there and did what you wanted to do. Yeah, it's and, too, and it didn't seem hard. it didn't seem illegal till you get caught. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. But if, but the most fun part of me was getting chased sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that days be those are I might forget where I did this piece or that piece, but I
But I always remember when I get chased. You know? Oh, you the really? guys who chased you, you told huh? me. You told oh, Hickey and Ski. Hickey and Ski. Okay, yeah. Hickey yeah. yeah, they were the, the Vandal cops there. Yeah. Oh. There were a few of them, but those were, they were mostly on the IRTs and stuff. Yeah, but they, they, that's, coming on the 49th Street, back in those days, they had, when he was at the, at the, um, at the bench, that's when they used to have the, the elevator that used to work there. And the, and the bridge they go across. Mm -hmm. Sometimes used to, they used to hide up there, or or they used to hide up by the stairwell, stairwells up there. Be peeking down, looking at the riders to see who they might know and who they could um, harass and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, who yeah, they yeah, could yeah, identify. Yeah. Because yeah. right. one time we were writing, and we heard that we were, that the Family Five was number one on their list to catch. So when we we just kept doing pieces, they couldn't figure out where we were doing pieces. Because um. Like the bottom of the train is a lip. Mm. So if you wanna on a on a on a station with a platform doing pieces, your paint your paint won't go down to you can't go down to the bottom because the platform is yeah. there. So that's how I think they were trying to figure out where you did your pieces. Did you do it on a on a platform layup? Mm -hmm. Or did you do it in a tunnel or in a yard? So when we used to do it in a in a yard or something like that, that bottom lip, we wouldn't go Past that bottom lip, so to uh, make them think we did it at a platform off. layup, yeah. Uh, we do it all like that. We did all kinds of tricks, then. and we ran down to the letter lines. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they tried to, they were really hard on us, so we went and hit the J's and the double R's there. Because they were flat like, like the IRTs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we switched lines for a while. And then when they came down on that line, we came back up on this line. <laughs> so you guys, you guys. Yeah, they catch us all around. You guys. Yeah, they came to Lee House one time trying to get Lee. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ain't over that. Yeah, yeah, that used to be all. Wow. Yeah, it was that hard. I tell you, they tried to pick me up one time. And we got chest out of Bay Chester. I had a, with a red scully cap like this. So we went to the layup. There was a bunch of us, too. And uh, we had wrapped up all that day. And so we went there right right before it got dark. We should have waited until it got dark anyway. But, you know, we all went. We got there, laid up the two chains and cut off all the lights and stuff, so we went in. Somebody else took us there, but they, they told me they had to go do something. And when they went to do whatever they had to do, the doors opened up, and uh, the Hickey and Ski and all of them was out there. Mm. So they jumped out the train, I ran under the train, I don't know where anybody else ran, but Mono ran on the top of the train and ran all the way down the top of the train, and he jumped off the edge, and he got away, he got away, I got away, I don't remember who else was with us. But then that Monday morning, when I um, when I went to go watch the trains in the morning, I still had my red hat on. So I was down there, and they came out and said, well, you wouldn't have got away from us at, at Baychester. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. So said, yeah, we know that red hat. And they tried to take me away and stuff like that. But when they started taking me all over here, handcuffed like this and stuff, they had to release me because they, they had no proof. What they going, how can you prove that I was there? You ain't got no tape, no picture yeah. of me or nothing. So that went away. But then... They always kept watching me all the time. They told me I come up there and I tell they wanted to start harassing me and shit like that. So I stopped going there. I started going to Brooklyn Bridge a little bit. Then I come up there a little bit, go back and forth. And then we just went all the way to the double R's. Because Lee, 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 Lee come to the bench every now and then, dock maybe once in a while. I was the most of the one was out there because I was painting with different people too. Yeah, you know, but yeah, yeah. And we all went to the double R's and the J's and all that. That's and those. I've seen pictures uh, of, of guys on top of the train walking. So how do a guy get up there and walk on top of the... Oh, well, you can climb up by where the door was. Remember, back then they had the train with the chains between the doors. Oh, yeah. They had the chains yeah. and they had the, the spring thing. Uh, yeah, yeah you, know, you climb, put your foot up on there and climb up on top. Okay. I never went on top because I'm scared of heights. So yeah. I'm going under. I ain't going on top. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I went under the train. <laughs> yeah. I just got to change the... Um, I'm talking about um, the work you're doing now, because um, a lot of artists are taking old you know, images of old old cars that they did and they're recreating yeah. them on canvases. And so how, how, how long have you started going back to well, painting again? Well, I, I painted when I first came back. I, I never really painted none of my old pieces, because to me it's, it's hard to recreate your old pieces. It's more easier for me to do new pieces and new canvases and, and styles and stuff. I'd be wanting to do the old piece, but then I, was, you know, it's easier for me to do something fresh and new, okay, you know, up yeah, to date yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. So what what kind of size cameras are you doing? Like sixteen by like twenty, yeah. thirty by 
I like I like to see my twenty. That's a perfect size to me. But I did on um, one with um with Ivory. He 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 getting a lot of writers to do big canvases for him at the studio up in um somewhere up, it's not upstate New York, not Bronxville. It's, it's somewhere like past Yonkers, somewhere up there where he live at. He got a um a big garage. And he be having canvases up there, and you can spray paint them up there and stuff. Yeah, I did too when I first came back. Okay, all right. right. So are you are you thinking about doing an exhibition of, of new works? Are you what are you thinking about? I that? haven't done no work for a while. Cause soon as I when I'm getting moved and I paint one, I sell them. I just sell it. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hold no, 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 no. Ain't doing me no good. <laughs> yes. Sitting around looking at my own work. No, I'm trying to do it to get paid. And I tell them, let somebody else buy it. You know, let them put it in their collection. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But you see, a lot of people, they do, they do a lot, you know. But I'm, I'm not into it like that. Yeah, know? yeah. Because if I, if I think of I, I feel if I do a lot, like the people that really buy it is like overseas, not not really here, you know. Because so, you go to some of these shows, you don't see like, you regular graffiti show, you don't see nobody really buying nothing. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. sitting around drinking and joking and talking and that's, you know, if I would do some work and put on the wall, I want to at least let it get paid some attention and soul, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they're not commission pieces, there's more... No, I, I did commission pieces, but... They're more like you're paying and you have buyers that are interested. Right. Like I did a, I did um for somebody in France, I did a, a guitar. Mm -hmm. I did one on there on a guitar, did mm -hmm. that. I'm doing. I'm doing what from now. It's it's like he, he wants you to do your whatever album you used to like back in the days. You do that. You get to buy the album. Then you you do a, a your piece on the paper. And then you write around on on it after. You know what you like about the album and all that. Yeah. Pay for that. You know. Like, yeah. That's what I'm doing. So you could. Did you use characters much in some of your pieces, or just mainly you just wrote wrote your name? No, I wrote my name with did characters and stuff. On canvases, yeah. On canvases? Not all of, not all of them, though. Not, oh, okay. Yeah. But I did a lot of characters on, on, on top to bottom, old cars. Old cars, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. but burners sometimes every now and then, but not that much. I'll be having a concert on my burner. What were some of your favorite characters on, on, on subway cars? I did, let me see, I did. I did the Yosemite Sam, I did... Um, <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. I did... Um, I did one with a snowman and Charlie Brown in front of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then I did um the keep on trucking man. Yeah. I did that. Oh, keep in front on of a, um in front of a a music note with eyes and, and hands going like that. Let me see what else I did. I wish I could see that. I know. Me too. I mean, that would be. Me I did too. one with a, with a big token. I got the picture of that. Uh huh. I'm trying to think what else. I I don't know, I did a few but that's of them. cool. I mean, yeah. like you simply Sam and yeah. other names. Uh, that that's that's cool. To, Cause that's an art form. To like yeah, absolutely be able to do that and, and do it on a train when you're under pressure. Cause yeah. you're under pressure. Yeah. But when I'm thinking about pressure, did you guys feel pressure? It doesn't seem like you guys felt yeah. pressure. Cause we, we was trying to organize, you know. We we don't go to where everybody everybody go to the same layers all the time, the same time and all. No, we like to be in there and be by ourselves. We don't want to be in there with a bunch of people because yeah. that's when shit happens. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, Mono and Doctor used to go, Mono and Doctor Slevin used to go the most, and I start, I go with them sometimes. Sometimes I go with one other different person. We do, like, a, a wild style, a whole car or something, you know. I don't go with it be like five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Yeah. Too, too many too, people. Too, yeah, too much to watch. Too yeah. much to watch, yeah. And when they're trying to get away, you be bumping into each other and all, nah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to go to jail for that. Yeah. Oh man, no, no, no. That's for graffiti shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see graffiti is like exploded around the world. Does it, do you have any thoughts about it? Do you, do you have any opinion about, you know, this, this, this new movement? I won't say new movement, but it's 50 right. years old. But you see what's happening. Do you want to get back into it? Or you just, you know, you, you, you love just being a part of it? I love being a part of it. When I get an urge to paint, I paint. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, mine, I don't have it every day. You know, I got spurts. Like maybe next one I might want to do a canvas. Then, then after that, I might not want to do nothing. I might do it on a piece of paper. It's not really like when I really want to do it. You know, not like I, I have spurts. That's all I can say, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why I got to keep working. 
Alright. I can't do that. I can't do that for a living because I, I die yeah. and starve. Oh. Yeah. I can't have the, have the urge to do it no more. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. I like to hang out with my friends and stuff. We go paint on the wall. Some, you know. We used to do it like on Saturdays when it was warm. Go paint. I go paint with Reed and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It's relaxing, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, but I'll I get back into it. All right, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, I would love to see you do a show. Like, you could do a solo show or be in a, some group shows, you know? Yeah, but I've been in some shows. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. I've been in some shows down here. But like I said, I'm going to buy this. You want to buy it? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. I got to get my paintings and bring it down, put it in the show. Then you got to go back and pick it up when the show is over. It's, I'm not making no money doing that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Now, if I go to a show like Futura and Lee and all of us in it, and I'll, I'll put one of my friends up in that car. I know someone's going to get bored. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but these little fly by night shows. <laughs> nah, man, they, they be drinking beer. They buy beer that nobody drink. No, no, 99 cent cans of beer. Let's get people living there. Oh, no, nah, I don't got time for that. Because yeah. somebody always end up arguing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we wanted to fight over things that happened like 40 years ago. Oh. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> See, if you ain't do nothing back then, you ain't doing nothing now. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, so, um, it, you know, obviously cartoons and watching other people's style and weed and probably other things were an inspiration for you. Were there any other things that inspired you as far as your style goes uh, um, with with Graf? Well, uh, let me see. When Knock came down from the Bronx, me and him used to hang out and stuff. And I used to watch some of the stuff he do. So I like imitate some of it. Then I switched it around my way. Then I start noticing, you know, different letter patterns in, in on the train and stuff from a lot of people from the Bronx, you know. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn had some nice writers, but the Bronx has like some real more style masters, mm -hmm. so I learned from them, and then I became one of the style masters from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. But I always wanted to make sure that my piece stand out from somebody else's, because I don't want them to say, oh, you bit that off of me, you bit that off of me. No, nah, you can't see it, but I, but I did, you know. Yeah. And my letters, I had to have connections in my letters and stuff like that, you know, use different colors and stuff. And it came out nice, I made a little name for myself, yeah, you know. Yeah, These yeah, people yeah. know who I am. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And they know not to go over my piece because they would have a problem like that. <laughs> cap, you know, cap, you know. cap, cap would not, would right. not have been, been around oh, if you oh, tried oh, that. Got him, boy. <laughs> um, but then, and I, I know in some of your first pieces you mentioned silver as like a, a prominent color. Were there colors that you were drawn to? Oh, like uh, when I did my burners, I was drawing like cascade green, ah. um, sound of wood tan. Yeah. See, Sandra with Tan was a color that was kind of hard to get. So oh, okay, okay. So one time, it. one time I, when I found some, I kept, I wrapped it up, wrapped it up, saved it in my in my house. Yeah. So then when nobody couldn't find it, then I bust out some Sandra with Tan pieces. And everybody, <laughs> okay. you know, everybody like, you're yeah, in awe. Yeah, yeah. Where you get that color from? Where you get that? And I saved that for a long time. <laughs> when the wraps got dry, and you couldn't find that color no more. <laughs> but my favorite colors like Cascade Green and Red. Cause it's bright and stands out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like yellows, sometimes some yellows you can see through, you know, but like school bus yellow and stuff like that was nice thick paint. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing you have to do when you, you know, back then trains had pieces everywhere, so you, yeah, you better go if you go over somebody's piece, you better put a cloud around it so they don't know that 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 you're under their piece. And, <laughs> and I went over them because yeah. then they, was, they like to they, if you go over somebody. If they can't catch you, they'll, they'll you do a French piece and they'll go all over your piece. And yeah, it'd be like being Back that's when that's what you call a war. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and what what about the caps to uh, uh, to the cans? Did you have to get a surplus of caps some someplace? Uh, yeah, well, back then we didn't have the caps like they got now. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only caps we could get was um, Niagara spray starch for the Rust Oleum and sure. uh, Jeform oven cleaner for the Red Devils. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Scotch Bright, I think. So we we go into the stores, into the supermarkets, and like maybe a bunch of us go that way or that way. Or we go and take all the caps off the cans and put them in our pockets or put them in your mouth or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wrap them up. Right? We didn't have a bunch of supplies, but 
that back then we used to try to clean the old tops. We used to take them home and ah. try to uh, soak it and stick a pin through it and all that, try to keep the caps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but right now, wow. they, you can buy them to when they clock. You just throw them Buy them like 50 at a time. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to score the supermarket for them. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I think before we were recording, you were telling me about how you used, the way that you used to get into Utica. Uh, you oh, want to yeah. talk about like the different ways you used to get into the layups? Because I'm sure it was a, a, pro, a separate process for each of them. Yeah, like Utica, you had to walk through Lincoln Terrace Park, that was Johnny's type of territory, and all the prostitutes and all that. Yeah. At night, the danger is to go through there, you will get robbed. Yeah. We used to go through. And right, it's a where the tunnel comes out, and the tunnel stops, and the elevator starts. Yeah. Right there, when the, when the train comes from New Lots, goes down into the tunnel, then you climb up, and you got to go over three sets of tracks to the third track, then you run down behind the train down into the tunnel. When you get down to the edge of the tunnel, right on that side is the train that's laid up right there. Okay, okay. He's okay. had one on the top, but I always, we always go to the bottom. I always go to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So so we should run down there, and. The side, of, the side of the train, where the train goes past, you, the layup train, you can piece on that side, or you can piece on the other side where you can't be seen. Okay, okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But on, on, if you see like a lot of nice pieces on one side, you can't, you don't want to go over nobody, so then you'll piece on the other side. Yeah. So when the train comes, you just duck under the train. <clears throat> then when it goes past you, then you come back out and finish your paint. Yeah. Then, uh, um, base chest to, to a hole in the fence, and you go up the hill, and the two trains are laid up there. But there's no lights there at night, but it's just the sunlight and the moonlight. Okay, that's Baychester. Right. Wow. Then, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So how how you see what your guys were painting? You see from the from the sun, the moon. Oh, the moon. Yeah, yeah. They, or if they, if they have the lights on in the train. Yeah. The natural light. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. And um, new lots at the back of the yard. They used to have a hole in the fence at the back of the yard. You can go up the hill, and the trains are right there. Okay, I right. see. Yeah. Now, yeah. I think Butch talked talked about having skeleton keys. So guys has skeleton keys to get in, and open up certain certain. Doors. Yeah, but people had keys, but most of it was like inside riders. So the inside oh, riders. Oh, yeah, okay, they want okay. to tag the train stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they get a key or they might steal the conductor key and and they run and take the keys and sometimes they get keys and they file it down to match that key and stuff. Yeah. My father had keys, but I never took those keys. He's crazy. <laughs> You yeah, want to still be around today? If you all right, I'm homeless boy. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to see him every day. Not, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, right. That's, that's, uh, it's interesting how close you were to to the MTA. Like it was right in your family. Yeah. And, uh, he was able to paint, you know, and, and do your thing, man. I, I know my father. He had to know. <laughs> he had to know. I know you know. He just told, he just said, whatever you're doing, you get caught. You don't call me because I'm not coming to get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So you, you never uh, came into contact with the prison system at all? Then? Not for graffiti. Not for graffiti. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So some other stuff. Yeah, you're a kid. You do all kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But you didn't do any time, like a long time. And no, the most I did was two weeks. Okay. And I violated probation. That was it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. Right. No, uh, so, um, so out of the trains, all the trains uh, that you painted, did you have any favorite ones that you remember? You see what he said? I like it that one. Yeah. Let me see what the two the Mary Lee did some burners with um what's the used to be a the two bird characters in the in the Mad books back in there. I forgot what the name mm. of them was. It wasn't a Tweety Bird character. No, no, it was um it be the two birds used to wear like like spy spy versus spy. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's what those characters. Okay, okay. They had yeah, them on yeah. each end of the cars. Oh wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that one. That was nice. Yeah. You and Lee. Yeah, me and Lee. The window down burners. And they were facing each other like that. Right. Okay. And I, I've seen Lee in uh, uh, recent interviews. He said like the Family Five still in touch. Like a lot of members are still know yeah. each other. Yeah, we all see each other and stuff. Mono's in Las Vegas. Doc is in Florida. OG's in Florida. But OG, I tell you, OG Saturday, he came up for Bot Sun funeral. Right. Mm. I seen him then. Yeah, we still all keep in touch and stuff. 
I was, I was, I seen Snuggy Doc, you know, and during the summer when Doc was up here, we all played in Staten Island. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, we still all like a family. Yeah. All right. Mm hey, -hmm. are there other questions from you, Kurt? Uh, it's a psych. What, what do you think about the future in terms of this art form and, 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 and your story in general? How, how do you want to be remembered yeah. as, as being a part of this, this global art form right now? I want to be remembered as an old writer, you know, that don't let this go to my head, you know. Yeah. I want to stay a humble guy. Yeah. And I ain't got to brag on my work because the proof is in the pudding. I got plenty of pictures. Yep. Nobody can't tell me I didn't do this and didn't do that. I said, I'm not going to argue with you. I just showed the pictures on the phone. I, said, I did this. I did this. I said, yeah, see what this here is? They just not doing this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I don't got nothing to prove. They even tell me, oh, yeah, you old school dudes. Y'all always bragging about this. I yeah, we ain't bragging. We, it's proof. We did this. Yeah. Y'all doing what we did. We did this before you. Yeah. Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all didn't just come out of the blue air with these styles. Y'all went back and looked at all them old pieces and you, you finessed it and did it in different ways. And but it's still, uh, you see the arrow coming off of here. Oh look, I did this before a long time ago. It's like that. They, they, they don't want to. They don't want to admit that where the roots of the whole thing come from. That's that's their problem. They want to act like they so high up on the ladder, like they they never. Watch nothing that we did. They just come up with this all in their head. It's a lie. We did it all. We did. We we had nothing to go by. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I had a little bit to go by because Payload and Tracy never before me, but Tracy and all of them had nothing to go by. Yeah. They went all. They were raw. They just came out. And '74, they used to all do like all the bubble letters and stuff like that. Payload and Phase and Riff and all of them did like some more nice styles and stuff. And they're like from '75, '76. It's like '76 to like '79. It was our turn. It was like Pot, Cool, Chain, me, Knock. Um, we started doing fucking burners. Yeah. You know what I mean? Real burner burners. Because that's when we switched the whole styles from the bubble letters. We started coming out with more styles for that one, you know, and that's when it really took off from there. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I just sit and listen to everybody's stories, all these new cats and all these new stories. Oh, yeah, yeah whatever. But y'all don't know, y'all didn't have to. The experience of what we talking about, we had to rack the paint. We ain't go to the store and look at a paint chart. Oh, give me this color, give me this color. We ain't got to do that. We, had, we came in the stores and just rack the paint. Uh huh. When you get your whole batch at the end of the day, damn, you look at your colors and see what colors you're gonna match up like that. We ain't had no color chart. Oh, let me get this color, this color. These two look good together. Yeah. And then you're going out your pocket. <laughs> nah, we had that. Yeah. We had to go to the store. We just rack what we can get. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. If someone today will offer you to do a, a a building that's like ten stories, and you can, would you do that building that's ten stories and just take take what you would do on the train and create a mural on the wall, which is what you see now. You see a lot of murals. So would that excite you if you had the opportunity to just to paint a what you call a commission mural? But it's, it's not on a train, though. <laughs> yeah, I would, but it had to be one story high. Cause oh, the height. Yeah, that's right. Oh. There ain't no way I'm going up there. Yeah, that's a good note to end yeah. on, man. Yeah. And what, what I also love about the art form is you don't speak about like races and nothing like that. Everybody yeah. talks about art, so no. Black, white, right. or anything like that. It's like everybody's into the art. And was that na a natural progression where your guys were going to the yard and it was never about race? No, because that's the, fun, the good thing about it. We were graffiti artists. We didn't see color. The only color we saw was paint. Yeah. <laughs> the only color we recognized we were we, we white, black, Chinese, everybody. We just all hung out together. Yeah. We never really noticed, you know. No, no, no colors in people. We just, yeah. we just, our difference is you a fucking asshole. That's all, that's all the difference it was. But we all, we all bonded together. Man, we just, that's what I tell you, some of the best friends I ever had was through graffiti. Yeah. No problems with them at all. You know, all colors, everything, man. Beautiful. They all welcome in my house. We used to all go to Tracy's house sometime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I first met Tracy, I met him through the bridge, and we all went to his house one morning. We went to the store and I racked up. 
baked in and eggs and all that. And he cooked breakfast for us and then we went racking. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, Tracy yeah. used to be a good dude. Oh, beautiful, wow. that's beautiful. Very, very yeah. powerful. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Yes, thank you so, so much. So we all we ask all of our uh, narrators to to do a tag for us, and this is going to be part of the library, so it's not going to go anywhere. So uh, I'm gonna give you a space here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the recording off here. Yeah.